Hello everyone, James Sennett here and today we're going to go over how to map your Inventor properties, Inventor I properties specifically, into Vault and uh, I'm actually going to do that from the custom tab in Inventor. So I've got myself a training Vault here which I've just set up just for this purpose. Uh, I've got a few other little things in there but don't worry about them. Uh, and if I jump into Inventor I've got my Inventor project and everything mapped into Vault already. So here I am creating just a new part it is. Um, apparently I'm missing a folder there which I probably should go and fix in a moment but uh, it doesn't matter. So I've got a new part here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check this part in. This part, just to confirm, has no custom I properties at all. So this is part 3 and I'm about to check part 3 in and it has no custom I properties. So when I go ahead and check that in, no problems there. Let's uh, Let's allow it to save as part 3 and check it in which is good and let's now create or let's close that one down and create another one from scratch we'll probably get that same dialog box oh no it's created it okay now uh, now when I'm in here what I want to do is go back up to your eye properties now if you can't find your eye properties that would be I've got a little button there otherwise you can go to your application menu and choose eye properties uh, alternatively you can choose from here anyway here I am in my eye properties and I want to go to the custom tab the reason why I'm not showing you how to map these guys some of these ones are already mapped so uh, for example description there's already a mapping in vault so we don't need to map that one again so I'm gonna go over the custom tab and I'm gonna call one sub category and I can choose from the list in there but otherwise just go OK I don't have to add a value straight away otherwise I could add a value if I wanted to but I don't need to um, and let's go and make another one call it uh, security class and add that one as well so I've now got two I properties in the custom area of my I properties let's go OK on that now the reason why I've just gone and done that in a new part is because you actually need a part to already have the property that you want to do the mapping in. Now I could check this in the vault or I could leave it checked out of vault. Uh, I could not even add it to vault if I wanted to, whatever you like. I'm going to choose to add it to vault straight away because that's probably just good practice. Right, so that now leaves me in vault under designs with two parts, part three and part four. Part three is the part that has no properties in it and part four is the part that has those two custom I properties in them. Just by the way, never ever ever allow part 3 and part 4 to be the names of your parts if you're actually producing stuff. Um, this is really bad workflow. You should have a numbering scheme that um, that's labeled better than part 3 and part 4, but it's okay for a demo. So let's head up to our administration side and find behaviors. Now under the behaviors you've got properties and here's your list of properties so far. You'll notice if I scroll through, there is no security class and there is no subcategory. So if I find the S's, you can see there's none in there. So I need to make a property in Vault that's mapped to the property in Inventor. To do so, I click New and I give it a name. This doesn't have to match the name that you gave the I property. However, it's nice to keep it all standardized. So let's call it class. Now when uh, when creating new properties uh, you do need to assign it to a category um, in this case because I'm using uh, in, in Vault Professional uh, I do need to assign a category. If you're using Vault Basic I don't believe you need to do this um, but I'm not sure. The reason why we might want to do this is because uh, for example if you're adding things into the engineering category they might have different properties required than the office categories and whatnot. So it's a good idea to be able to define out what properties go onto what files. In this case, I don't have any categories set up really, so everything's just going to the base category by default. So I'm going to select on that. It is a text type that I want to choose from, so that's good. And I'm going to go, uh, actually, just before we go too much further, that property there has a few little um, property values in here as well. So for example, enabled is going to be on def by default, which means that property is actually in use. And searchable, um, so can you do a basic search on this? 
um, otherwise it won't uh, won't show up in a search um, and then you've got initial values list values you might have in security class this is a good one for, for example you might have restricted you might have commercial you might have blah blah blah, blah and they're the only values that you'll accept so let's go and say other just as another example so in this case you can go and enforce the list values so if it's not restricted or if it's not other then it will show up as a property non-compliance value on that part otherwise you can go and uh, remove those and not have any list values you can also have, have list values there but not require one of those values. You can type in your own value as well as have a list in there as well. You can have a minimum and a maximum length, um, but uh, you get the idea. And by the way, you can um, you can actually define some of these properties per category as well, which is really nice. So if I was to add an extra category in there, you'd see this is for this category, this is for this category. So in base category, it does not require a value but in the engineering category it does require a value or whatever it is doesn't matter let's get rid of that engineering head over to mapping and let's start our mapping so we start with the entity file so in this case we choose file now that could be item or file depending on what type of property you're using however file will only be there because I'm not selecting any of my item categories so file and provider is this is an inventor file and in this case it's an IPT so I choose inventor IPT by selecting that I can now go over to my next column and this is actually where I do the mapping so I go and say okay I want you to get the property security class in vault I want you to map that from the property security class in inventor to do that I need to find a file with the property security class already in it so if I go import from vault and go and find the property in this part here because remember it was part 4 that I added the, the properties into so let's go ahead and select on that that'll give you a list of all of the properties that are in part 4 including our subcategory and our security class both of those are labeled as custom in the classification so let's go and map the property the vault property security class to the inventor property security class. Once that's done, you'll see it's picked up, it's a text type, it's picked up as custom, it's picked up a default mapping which is bi-directional at the moment. So it can either go from vault into the document or from the document into vault. You can define that more specifically. So you can say, okay, well it's, for example, a revision control would be from vault into the document and not vice versa. Or you can have it say, okay, Vault, I just want you to extract properties. I don't want you to be able to push them back into the document. Uh, but bidirectional is a good place to start. And here's the really cool part, the Create button. Now, if I choose this to Yes, and this is the reason why I created Part 3 and Part 4, is because I want to tell Vault, if the property doesn't exist like it already doesn't exist in Part 3, I want you to create the property and populate it with the information that I tell you to. So just take note of this little create, create guy because he's actually pretty um, pretty cool. What it's going to do is it's going to create the property inside of an iPart or um, of a part, I should say, not an iPart, um, if it doesn't already exist. So go OK. And I'm not going to do the other one. I'm just going to do security class and go OK, OK. So now we have this part here, which has a security class property in here somewhere, probably. I might just need to be checked out and checked back in, but that's okay. In this case, I'm just going to go and edit the properties. I'm going to go and place in a column. So customize my view and place in that security class column. Should just type in S. There it is. Add and go OK. So there's my security class column. Now in this case, uh, by double clicking, I don't get an option of a drop down or anything because I didn't choose a list value. But in my case, I might just go and say com for commercial and go OK. So what that's now done is it's written the property commercial into this one here. Looking down there, you can see security class is commercial. 
let me just go and get a new version of this file and uh, and actually just refresh that from Vault just to make sure that you're all on the same page and uh, and go and grab that one there so you can now see security class has the value commercial because I changed it inside of Vault and that is now being pushed down into the part conversely if I was to go and let's say check this file out check out yes to all go back into my custom properties um, and let's change it to other modify that and go OK let's check that back in save it and OK when I go back into vault hit the refresh button and I'll now see security classes other so you can see that bi-directional mapping happening which is exactly what I said however remember this file here this file didn't have any of those custom properties in them and if you go back to the start of the video you'll see that but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the property manager in here you can see security class is in there even though the prop the part doesn't have a security class I property and let's just go and put in um, YouTube vid and go OK close and what that now means is let's go and get a later version of that and go back into inventor and choose the open button and go and grab number three so here we are opening up number three you can see there if I go into the I properties custom there's exactly what I expected so even though this one didn't have the I property in there in the first place Vault has gone and built that I property and populated it with the information that I told it to populate it with so that's what that little yes no um, under the create drop down is in the mapping so that's uh, that's how to do your mapping from inventor I properties into your vault uh, strongly suggest it the more you can map into your vault the better off you'll be so uh, thanks very much for watching I'll see you all next time